Shakespeare once wrote, Life is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Okay, I guess that's everybody. We can uh, go ahead and get started. Simmons, thank you for being late, as usual. Sorry, um, traffic. Well, first off, I'd like to congratulate everyone on a very productive quarter. In fact, this has been one of the most profitable quarters in the last three months. We should all pat ourselves on the back for a job well done. Not you, Simmons. Now, let's get down to business. The reason why we have gathered today is to discuss a growing problem in our company, one that is stifling our profits and keeping the competition more active in the consumer field. One of the most common complaints from our customers, the one that is driving them to do business with our competition, is this. Our competition has a better vocabulary than we do. Hey, Baker, nice shirt. Man, everybody looks great, great, great outfits. Image is everything. I'm lost. Now, I've done a lot of research on the subject, and if my estimations are correct, we can increase productivity by 14% if we bemuse our customers with scintillating idiosyncrasies. There you go. Top notch. I believe if we show our competition the sheer dearth of our wisdom, and wow, our customers with ubiquitous platitudes. This company will waltz across that bridge into the 20th century with the greatest abandon. Outstanding. Magnanimous. First rate. Oh, yeah! For starters, does anyone know any big words that they could share with the group that could improve our vocabularies right now? Not you, Simmons. I have one. Nepotism. Good. Now use it in a sentence. This company relies on nepotism to keep morale alive. At least that's what my father says all the time. That's why he's the president of the company. Great. That's a great start. Anyone else? Yes, Baker. Feel free to speak up. Moribund. Fantastic. Now use it in a sentence. My wife tells me this company's future is extremely moribund. Yeah, 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 yeah. Serendipity. That's the spirit. Encouragement from our spouses is what keeps us going. Who else? How about oxymoron? I'm not sure about that one. We don't want to offend the mentally challenged. Okay, then how about bellwether? My secretary says you're the bellwether of this corporation. Well, you tell her flattery will get her nowhere. It's individualism that keeps this company on its feet. I agree. I, I, I agree. agree. I agree. I'm lost. I know, Bagatelle. My wife says in this growing market, our company is a mere Bagatelle next to the competition. That's the spirit. My roommate says I should be more misogynistic to get ahead in business. That'll do, Simmons. On that note, we should now consider redefining some of the words that have become commonplace in big business that have pejorative connotations. Top Ameliorate. Let's start with downsize. <gasps> My point exactly. That's why research has shown that more positive words have a less damaging effect. Therefore, the word downsize will be replaced by the word allocate. As in, our company will be allocating certain segments in order to improve productivity. Does anybody have any big words on that? Post or or replicate. Let's put this word into practice. To begin with, we need to allocate our company name. An independent study has shown that clientele can remember companies that have smaller names. We will dazzle them with our newfound big words while giving them a succinct new name to remember. 
Starting in this new quarter, we will no longer be recognized by our Susquepedalian gnome de plume. There you go. Top notch. American Whole Term Financial Industries Incorporated. We will henceforth be referred to as a very small A Hole Inc. Does anybody have any big words on that? Benevolent. Top notch. Also, Simmons? <laughs> We've allocated your position and decided to go in a different direction. You can pick up your paycheck on Monday. The next item on our agenda will be to discuss the new employee look. In the 70s, beards and long hair were worn. In the 80s, it was mustaches and feathered hair. In the early 90s, we lost the mustaches and moved on to shorter hair. We at A-Hole Inc. <laughs> have decided to step ahead into the next century by eliminating body hair altogether. The businessmen of the new millennium will look more like Big Brother than Orwell would have ever dreamed. And the women will look like mannequins wearing hot pants and dickies. 